This interview is about Swami Jagadananda. There is very little written material about him. We do know that he was a disciple of Holy Mother, was very scholarly, translated the great master from Bengali to English, and was highly revered. Before joining, he was a government school teacher in Shillong, and he died in December 1951 in Brindavan. I'm going to ask you to describe the first few times that you met Swami Jagadananda and what prompted you to seek his holy company. Swami Jagadananda, Premeshananda, and Sadeshananda, and Somyananda and Satsangananda. These were the five stars, you could say, among the sannyasis of Ramakrishna Mission. All of them became very famous as good sadhus, and Premishan is very famous for his ideas of preaching and attracting people. So when Jagadananda became very famous for his erudition, of course, great devotion also there, he became the Vedanta teacher for many of our senior swamis. Every summer, he would come to Devagar for several years and teach the teachers, sadhus there. In later days, earlier days he was in Kashi, then in Almora, then stayed in that area. Once he was in Kashmir also, in the cold areas normally. And Barlugon and other places. How I met him, see these people when they left their area, they did not go back. That was the old style, very ancient style. Uh, in Ramakrishna there are two tendencies. One is don't go, and other is now become normal. Mahapurushwan would encourage people to go and see their parents. And Akhandi said, we are not born. Who, who is the parent? When the birthday is to observe, Mahapurushmas agreed. Okay, said, I am not never born. What, what birthday? So we have got both these tendencies. <laughs> Anyhow, so Prabhupada Gopesh Maharaj, Jogadandi, none of them went back to their birthplace hmm. after. Our Gopesh Maharaj used to say that their area called Dulali, he was a university town. All the topmost scholars, of special various branches, all are available there. That's where it's fond of training. It was a university, university mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And the teachers would invite students from different parts, feed them, maintain them, and give education. That was the old style. Anyhow, so Jagadandi also did not uh, have any contact. But how I came to know, because we are hard about it, but I was still a student. And I was going to Musuri Hills, where my eldest brother was there. But I was known to the Ramakrishna Mission, so I got an international letter by uh, Amrita Shwarandaji and stayed in Ramakrishna Center. So I came to Kishanpur Center, then one day morning walked up to the hill. After about eight miles or nine miles, there was Barluganj where Swami Atulanda used to stay. And he would invite some of the older Swamis to go and spend time with him. In, in summer, when it would be very hot in Kashi and other places. When I went there, Jagadandaji was there. And the interesting thing is, they are reading from Atulandaji and all of them at the habit, twice a day they read a holy book. And Swami Jagadandaji was reading Sri Ramakrishna, the great master in Bengali, Ramakrishna Dila Prasanga. And on the spot you are translating, as I often do, is translating also. And there will be discussion with Radha Swami and others. Then I told him, Maharaj, it's wonderful. It could be recorded. Then Jagadhar said, all right, all right, let time come, you can do it. And strangely, after many years, I joined the order. I had education that is Upur, yes, Upurira studies under him as a brahmachari. Then I was transferred to Madras. After two, three years, this task of uh, 
translated the Liya Pranga, fell on him. He was considered the greatest uh, conversion person, new Vedanta as well as uh, devotional lore. And he translated the book with, and wrote with his own pen, a pen, pen of nib, steel nib in those days, no fountain pen. Or probably could have procured, but he was used to this. The whole huge book uh, translated like this with his pen. And the more astonishing was from a Satsuruparanda, who was a Prudhavata editor, is that he edited this book in that handwriting and made some changes here, small changes here. So that is what Swami Jagadananda. There is a story about it when a translation was prepared by Swami Bhimalanda and Tapasyananda, a great master. But he was lying down unpublished for many years. Then our customer was came, he was a great organizer. So he took up and the desperate of finding money for publishing it. But Kolyarhangi was the president of the center and was a professor at one time. He read some of the pages, oh, this is not translation. This is a sort of a substance writing. It's not actual translation. So he circulated letters in America and other places, what should be the presentation. And ultimately he decided let that be translation, faithful translation. Others differ, somebody says substance give, gist give, interpretative, it should be, many words will not be understood like that. So that was the decision. And he was considered to be the best man who could enter into the intricacies of the philosophy also, without changing the meaning. Didn't you actually do the index for that book or, or have to proof the great uh, we, master? We did index and all that, yeah. I read proof also. Uh, Gitaranda did first was some page of typing he did in the beginning. Then he was transferred. So Gitaranda, he was also Brahmacharya in Madras. And another old, old Swami was done, Mangalanda, who read proof. He was in charge as his assistant. So it was as if the words of a holy man had come true because you had suggested to him that he translate the great master and then you ended up having to also work on Luckily, it. Luckily, yeah, what a chance. And second chance, I studied Chandigya Purusha under him. And later, I was translated Chandigya Purusha in Madras because there is the only Purusha left out, which was not translated, big Upanishad. And customers requested me, can you do it? I agreed, and then I realized that he was, of course I did not complete the book, I read some of the chapters, and then other Upanishads also. But that was the interaction with him. So these two things came wonderful. So, that first time that you met him was accidentally, you could say, almost, in, in the sense, sense that you sense, didn't know he was there. Yeah. In a sense, of course, I thought I would meet some of them in some of the holy places, not particularly him, no. And then when was the second time that you met him? The second time I went as a student to study in Kishanpur. Well, by that time I joined the order, was a Superintendent lecturer in Birmad with Damandir, and college had a vacation, summer vacation. So I went there at that time for a month to study under him. And what did you study with him at that time? Mainly the Chandigya Upanishad and then later one or two other Upanishads here and there. Of course, incident is our Satya Krishna Maharaj, Shabi Atmasthananda, now Vice President. He was an attendant of Swami Birajananda. At that time, Birajananda Ji was in Dharadana city and he was staying in Kishanpur every day go, work for a whole day, then come back. Because that house was crowded and all that. So he was studying Birajananda Kantar, Jagadananda Ji. So I told Jagadananda Maharaj, why should you work so hard twice teaching? I shall sit in the same class, sit in the same class with Atmasthandri. He said, no, his doubts are not your doubts. Why should you sit with him? And he was ready to teach me twice a day. 
every time one and a half hours, about three hours extra labor he was ready. So that was great that the idea is not we had intellectual understanding to be convinced that you have the real the Atman, that your real nature is the Atman. That is more important than intellectual understanding. That was a special point. So at that time I stayed with him. So this is the second time. One whole month, one whole month. Sometimes we'd go out for a walk. Other than heavy scriptures also. Sometimes you talk this or that way. Of course, when I first time I met, I told him, of course, naturally my father was a disciple of Holy Mother. That was my prestige point. I told him, he asked, how is he? He doesn't know that he died 25 years ago. Is he? 23 years. So I told him, oh, he died long ago. Oh, I, of course, I completely forgot everything, you see. So I knew my father. So I said, father also belonged to Shilong uh, and that ashram group. So that is why connection came with him. And what characterizes Swami Jagadananda to you? Illumination personified. As a result, a man of great conviction. With a capacity to inject that conviction to some extent. One major advice he gave me was when I was taking leave. He told me, when you work, with what attitude you work. I told Maharaj, I have joined a student's home, a college. So I must have had some desire to work among the students. He said, no, you should have this attitude. That our Guru, Sri Vivekananda has ordered us to serve the people. So, we are carrying the order of the Guru. That is the orthodox position. That whatever Guru does, if you do, that is spiritual practice. Because Swami Vivekananda extended the scope of service by explaining that if you feel the presence of the Divine in other beings, it is spiritual practice. It is worship. You must be aware of their presence. So, with that attitude, but he was studying the orthodox scriptures also, orthodox scholars, they support the idea that whatever the Guru says, if you do, do it, you will get, you will progress in spiritual life. So he altered me to cultivate that attitude, and which will be strictly according to orthodox scriptural attitude. Um, so. Many of the young brahmacharis came to study with Swami Jagadananda. Is that correct? Yes, but mostly the, he went to them. Oh, he went to them. He went to them because so many people could not come away from work. Mm -hmm. Deogori used to go regularly for several years because it was a school and they had vacation. Mm -hmm. And it was a healthy place also. And in the school they had a large number of teachers and brahmacharis swamis. So he would get a batch of people, at least uh, 10, 12, 15 people at a time, who were serious readers. And did he choose the text that they were going to study, or did they choose the text or, or scripture? Exactly, I don't know. But he had translated some books there, like Atma Gyan Upadesh Vedi. Later he translated uh, several other Sanskrit books, yeah. 